Right, hello again. Uh, welcome back. This is where we were last time. Just the line drawing of this. Let me show you the remind you again. There's the reference picture of a um, a building on a farm near where we live. Uh, and there's my drawing as I'd left it last time. I may have added a bit more detail in, in some of the shadow on the pen work. Um, but this paint stage isn't going to take very long because I don't want it to be a... Um, a very carefully painted piece. I want it to remain, I want it to retain, not remain. Flip your neck. Um, some liveliness and some looseness. So the first thing for me, I'm gonna be coloring this really, really quickly. And with everything I do, the very first thing I put in is, um, is the sky and that's a really pale mix of a a cobalt blue let's just put some these splashes aren't just you know a clever effect um i actually think they add something to the to the liveliness and, and the look of of a um of a subject um i'm actually working look i'll show you i'm working the colors are all coming from this little sketches palette um and the green I'm going to put down first is, this is probably green gold with some yellow in it and a touch of the touch of the cobalt, a bit more, sorry, I should have done that, a bit more green gold. As you probably gathered, look, I'm not very scientific in my color mixing. It's more of an instinctive thing. Um, and there you go, there's the, There's the green gold gone in, and one of the th one of the problems that I had through the summer, which I doubt I'm going to have now, is that we had that glorious heat wave, um, and all the paintings I did, whenever I used them, um, switch brushes, the the washes were drying quicker than I could. Um, get stuff down and as I like to as I really like to um blend other colours in as I'm as I'm working um it was a bit of a problem and here I'm just a bit close to the sky there I think because it's um it's still wet but let's I, I want to I'm not going to put green everywhere I just want this to I want this greenery which on the on the um original photograph really does frame frame the building really nicely uh, so let's get some bit of darker green in here i'm not again i'm not really replicating the color in the photograph um as i say time and time and time again if you want something that looks exactly like the colors in nature i.e a photograph then you just frame the photograph. Um, this is my, my interpretation of it. Looseness. Um, let's get some brighter colours in there. A bit of this. The only place I will put more than one kind of layer in is around this, this bit here. While this is drying, I'm going to keep an eye on this area because um, I want it to get some brush technique in um i want this to really really pop out by adding this Look, this is this is nearly almost pure pigment you can probably see how it's moving around and this color is my favorite green from daniel smith range it's undersea green and that just adding that you see i think it it's already added some distance to the to the view you can see and the sun was actually coming from this direction um let's put a bit in here because i've got it on the brush and a bit up here it wouldn't really be light there um there you go and we'll just pick some more up because it's not quite dark enough there I want it to be really dark. Um, 
want it to really pop out. And um, as I think I may have said before, somebody somebody picked up my, my sketchbook and said, you paint light really well. I love the way you paint light. And I, I had to kind of point out that you don't really, well, I don't think I do. I don't paint light, uh, but what you do is paint something dark next to something bright and it that kind of gives the illusion of light it's that contrast so there you go I'll leave that green alone now um so Sam I'm working from this from this travel sketch but I've actually also got um a load of these Daniel Smith and there's the Yorkshireman in me look these dot cards you're only meant to use them to try um but I carry on using them until they. So I'm picking up something here for the red, for the red brick pillars, of which there are three. There you go. There's the other one, and there's that one. Because all this other stuff is a stonework. Um, I've done it the wrong way around. Actually, I've put put the the darker one on, the darker colour on first. I'll come back to that because I, although I'm not bothered about stuff bleeding, I actually think if that bled into that, it would look a little, I don't know, but there you go. So let's get that colour on. Um, the colour of this, of this tank here, look. Um, I'm just going to use, a, a, that's, this is indigo, I think, with a tiny hint of, I'm being fairly careful. Um, but I'm sticking to the rule where I just put the paint down once and leave it. I'll come back to that because I've just looked, it's actually darker and I want that to be, no, I don't, what am I about? This is the tint I'm gonna use for the roof behind. Um, there. And it's gonna be a much paler Pale of tint. I think this green's almost dry now, um, so I can bring it along there and along. Then back to a bigger brush because what I want to do is to use some. Um, this is yellow ochre, which I'm using for this, this stonework here. Oops, there you go. Rookie error look, it's going to bleed in there, but do you know what? I'm not fussed. And I'll also run the yellow ochre along this stonework there. Um, back to the smaller brush. Let's just colour in this. Um, this is a, yeah, that was a, that's a, a wooden prop, I think. Um, and let's get some more. I'm using quinacridone sienna now, just to, because along the, along the front of this. And I'm brightening the colours up, but you know what? I want it to be, um, I want it to be I want little pops of colour everywhere. So um, I'm just picking up something for that. I'm going to put that in there. That's probably a bit of metal there. Um, and the very last thing, sorry, the thing I forgot to do, this path here, and I should have, see if I've still got some of that green mixed. Yeah. I'll just look, I'll just put some green here just to to marry in with that and put a bit more up here now, I think. Because it kind of, whoops, look, there you go. A run back, that wasn't planned. Um, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it, you know, these things happen. Um, 
And the way to treat that is to wait until it's completely dried. It's damp, the way it's completely dry. And I'll just, um, I'll spray it with this, this water and just, just blend the edges in. Um, and this is what happens when you're not rushing, but I'm doing a, a quick piece. Look, this is bled into there. But all, all I shall do with that is just utilize that and take some of that color in there and drop it in. And there you go. That's how you make it. That's how it, I meant it to look like that all along. Of course I did. Um, and then the thing that's really going to make this this look as I'd imagined is in these shadow areas where I've just got pen in, I'm just going to mix a really, really thick, rich um, colour of Payne's Grey and Indigo. Not black, because I, I think black, if you use pure black, it, it kind of kills. It can kill the liveliness in a um, in a drawing or a painting. Um, let's see, I think now I can still, I can see now that that's still kind of um, too wet to put this, to put this in. So I'm wondering about adding some colour to this this building here um, but then you see this is my problem one of the things that people always comment on is that they like the stuff that's where it's just using color you're focused on on an area if I color this in which is a lovely old shed I can do some nice color in there then you know, you've got a building there that's got color a building there that's got color but then there's a house at the back so if they've got colour, you'd have to do colour. And before you know it, I'm painting the road, doing all this, and we've got a fully coloured sketch in. And I really want, I want the focus to be on this building. So um, that's what I'm going to do. Resist, resist, resist. Let's put this in here. Now, as I say, that this is a mix of um, Payne's Grey. Not much water at all. Payne's grey and indigo just to get some real dark into it. I'm going over these pen lines, but then again, once this has once this has dried, the pen lines will actually come back through. Um, and while I've got this on, I'm gonna put a colour over this side of this water tank. There you go. And um, you see, it's still not dark enough there. So I, there you go, there's some, this green's nearly dry, but it's, it's dried into the wash. So I'll put some more this is proper neat pigment look on there. And what I'm going to do, damp brush, just soften the edges look. Put some on there. I'll, I'll use the back of the card as a, as a mask while I, while I get some of these um, Darker tones are good. There you go. Oh, lovely. Look at that. I love that. But masking it there. And suddenly, you see, there's something happened there where that's bled into that. Um, and I'm not too precious about it, but I would quite like the face of that. So let me, the face of the brick pillar to stand out more. So I've just dabbed off that. Um, and I think we'll leave that, that, that stage one of that colouring. So um, we'll revisit it for the final bits in a little while.